Hey, welcome back to the My Kind of Podcast. Today I'm speaking with Dr. Jonathan Dow, practitioner of Chinese herbal medicine and uh, yoga instructor. Oh, this guy does all sorts of things. He's going to tell us all about how we can improve our bodies through yoga and uh, medicine and herbs in our diet and exercise and tons of stuff. Stay tuned. Hey there and welcome back. Okay, so Dr. Jonathan Dow, he's joining us today to talk about all things uh, Chinese herbal medicine, uh, yoga and lots of cool stuff that's going to make us feel better. Welcome, John. Nice to see you, mate. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you're Thank very you. welcome. So, John, what's uh, what's made you who you are today? You know, you're a practitioner of this is this Chinese herbal medicine, um, mm. you know, this incredible yoga practice. Talk to us a bit about that. <clears throat> well, um I um, actually grew up around here. Oh, did you? Just down the road. Okay. I'm from Miami, Burley area. Um, I, I was very fortunate to um, grow up around Chinese medicine. Mm -hmm. um, I actually said my godfather was uh, pretty much a, one of the first doctors of Chinese medicine here on the Gold Coast back in the 70s. So I grew up as a, as a child having acupuncture and taking herbal medicine and growing up around Chinese medicine and yoga and... Tai Chi and Qigong and all that. So um, that was, uh, you know, really how I was introduced to it just from a young age. So it was all part of my life. When I graduated from high school, <coughs> that was really the only thing that appealed. Uh, yeah. How does it? How does it help? Uh, you know, in day to day life. I mean, how does these mm. do these practices help anyone out there that wants to feel better, look better, sleep better, live mm. longer? I mm. mean, what? What? How do you apply it? Mm. Well, the Chinese were very clever. For thousands of years, they've been studying um, not so much disease like we study today, we have a system of studying disease. They were more interested in studying health mm -hmm. and you know how to prolong the body and how to keep it in you know a high functioning state of health. So they developed a five uh, prong approach okay. predominantly to that, which is what Chinese medicine made up of those five key key elements. And most of us have, have heard of them, but didn't realize they're all a part of Chinese medicine. So acupuncture, yep, that's one of the first things most people heard of. Doctors are doing it these days. There's a lot of medical proof, and we've got also body work or structural therapy. Yep, um, you know people go to the osteo, the Cairo, things like that. So mm -hmm. important. So I call it Chinese panel beating. <laughs> so it's basically where we align the structure of the body, the spine, the muscles, okay. and, and also the organs as well, visceral organ manipulations and getting everything actually lined up so it works properly. So the f that's the, the physical aspect as well. We've also got Chinese herbal medicine, which most people have heard of. Mm -hmm. So the um, Mother Nature has an incredible material medica of medicines, which is what Western medicine um, synthetically extracts from. And also uh, one of the other, the other important ones is, everyone's talking about today's nutrition and food, using food to heal the body. So it's a big one. Right. And how to do that. And the last one, probably they say the most important is the Chinese system of yoga. And most people have never heard of Chinese yoga before, but uh, in, in Chinese it's actually called Nei Dan, N-E-I-D-A-N. Okay. And uh, that translates as internal alchemy. Is that right? Yeah. I like that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's not obviously called Chinese yoga. Yoga is an Indian word, uh, which means union or union with with God or union with the, the, the supreme self or depending on how you translate it. Um, and so there, the Chinese have their system and this involves all the medical exercises and breathing and everything that's similar to the Indian system of yoga. Which one would you say started? I mean, for me, I imagine that yoga, mm -hmm. when I think of yoga, I think of India and mm -hmm. maybe Ubud. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's the uh, mecca of yoga today. It is, it seems to be. Yeah. Uh, so did it start in China and flow down to India or start there and go back the other way? Mm. Which was first? Well, from what we understand, um, they were bordering each other. So they were very much communicating with each other and um, throwing things back and forth. 
the Chinese were probably a little bit m earlier on um, more uh, developed in the actual medical exercise system. Mm -hmm. um, hence hence the, the Qigong, ancient Qigong practices and things like that. Um, so, you know, in that sense, so Indian yoga asanas, which is what we t usually when we say yoga, today we talk about the yoga postures we do in the classes, they're actually not that old. They're only a couple of hundred years old. Is that right? Yeah, a lot of people think they're, you know, some thousands of years ancient, old, yeah. ancient thing. Um, not discounting, they're, they're very good. But um, in the ancient Vedic scriptures in India, the, um, we ha we ha they're mostly talking about other types of yoga. So, yana yoga, uh, bhakti yoga, and karma yoga, not the type of asana or raja yoga, which we, we talk about okay. today. Karma yoga, what's that? Mm. Uh, Kama yoga is the yoga of, of, of service. So like we say today, um, maybe you know, going to do some work for the salvos. It's the yoga of service and of helping others. Yeah, so achieving yoga by helping others. Mm. I like that. Yeah, I mm. guess people think of, you know, you get good karma if you do something good for someone else. Yeah, the um, word karma, you say good karma. The word karma just means action. Is that right? Mm. So it's good action. Yeah, I like if that. if you keep good action, then, you know, well, we like to feel that you probably get back good action but you know that's it's it karma actually means action the word's often used incorrectly in english language but it's and and what were the other two uh so yani uh, yana yeah yana yoga is the study of scripture and, and and the study of the you know the um the the wise words so by reading scripture one will get it one will get realizations right uh the same way christians read the word they read the word of the bible they they receive insight so by studying the wise words of the prophets and the sages yeah uh, then one receives yoga, one receives union. And the other one, which is bhakti yoga, is the yoga of, of devotion and, and emotion. So yeah, Christians do it too. It's the uh, art of singing and, and devotion to, to God. So in India, they, they, bhakti yoga involves singing in Sanskrit and using instruments and, and, and dancing and singing in a devotional way. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Hare Krishna people would be probably, you know, a perfect example of uh, bhakti yoga. So there's different types of yoga lineages in India. So there's four, the four main, four main paths, uh, you know, very, very, all very important. The, the uh, yoga asanas, uh, interesting, we're talking mm -hmm. about those, mm -hmm. uh, they were pretty much developed around 200 years ago um, Funny enough, they weren't really a part. And originally, yoga was all about meditation and, and prayer and mantra and the other types of yoga which we right. talked about. Then um, the yoga asanas developed in India when the British were in control uh, of India and occupying India. And just like in, in uh, Brazil, when the, uh, they weren't allowed to do any fighting arts, so they hid in the dance, the capoeira. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I heard this story. So in India, the Indians were getting together and they wanted to overthrow the British, right? Right. So they were getting together and doing a lot of calisthenic exercises. And uh, the British were like, you know, you can't do that sort of thing. So then they were like, oh, well, we're just doing yoga. So they sort of hid their oh. their strengthening practices and they developed things like the sun salutation, and which is where a lot of it started, in their practice. And they're just like, uh, we're just doing our spiritual practices and they're blending it in with their spiritual practices, their chanting and things like that. Right. And um, there's been a few PhD studies on the yoga asanas, you know, the origins of yoga asanas. And a lot of the uh, yoga asanas, when they started, they were actually coming from... The, the British had actually learnt them, th um, sorry, the Indians had actually learnt them through uh, the information that was available at the time by the British, which was through Swedish calisthenics. Oh, wow. And so... The plot thickens. Yeah, so you could probably say the origins of the Augustinus is um, the great Peter Ling, Swedish um, uh, calisthenics and gymnast. So that's where most of them come from. And then the Indians, you know, developed them further in right? their own way. And then Americans have done the same and, and developed them further. So they're not some ancient thousands of year old practice like we might be led to believe. That yeah, doesn't I make feel them like I, I feel like most yeah. yogis I know, people who practice mm. yoga, seem to. Well, I mean, this is just my impression, but I feel like uh, I thought yoga was many thousands of years old. You know, taught mm. and, and practiced only in India, and that's mm. maybe where it developed. But turns well, out that's not the case. Well, parts of it are. You know, the meditation, the chanting, and things like that are, and the the breathing. You know. Um, but the yoga asanas um, definitely aren't. Um, it doesn't discount, you know, that they're very beneficial for the body, just like you know, you know, calisthenics is and things like that. Um, 
and you know Pilates is not that old. It's only about a hundred and something years old. And Joseph Pilates developed that. That was it's amazing system as well of healing the body as well. Um, but yeah, we are sort of led to believe that yeah that yoga asanas are some ancient ancient practice which is which they're not yeah i certainly thought that what about when i go to my local yoga studio i think i do i do vinyasa mm. um mm. that, where's that fit into it well the vinyasas and the, the the asana based yoga systems which might include a bit of breathing and exercises and, and things like that and maybe a bit of chanting they all come under the, that fourth category which is raja yoga or, mm -hmm. um, and that's um raja which means king it's the yoga of practice technique so you know they're using techniques meditative techniques um, postural techniques um, to achieve some form of uh, peace or uh, oneness so um, this is uh, what is the main one that we're doing today is the raja postural techniques and breathing techniques and things like that what about what about bikram yoga mm. um with the hot bikram with the sweating yeah i'm a bit of a fan of that actually yeah. I, li I like the sweating is that yeah is, well, is, is, is that a helpful sweating practice? is very beneficial you ask the scandinavians all about sweating and uh, the benefits of sauna and uh you know bikram was very clever in that he designed um you know a form of yoga in a sauna mm -hmm. as you, you could say and uh when we um we sweat um a body loses um, a, a lot of a lot of um, fat, basically. You know, it's, it's a really Bik Bikram yoga was really um, popular, as you know, America because of you know the weight loss as well. You know, is uh, that right? Because when we lose weight, um, people say, oh, "I lost, you know, I lost five kilos or whatever." You know, where did it go? You yeah, know, how did you lose it? Like people think you you poo it out, right? You, know, you don't poo it out. You know, you when when your body gets rid of fat it it most of it comes out um, actually through your breathing seriously so um, there's a lot of the breathing techniques in Bikram so you actually breathe your fat out H how does that work is that a complicated process or um, yeah, it can be to ex it, but it's basically that when fat burns up just like you put oil into a car um, you know it burns it up and it produces gas out the back right you you, you it, when it burns up through heat you're breathing out your fat you breathe it out and um, the other way it comes out is you sweat it. You sweat, you sweat a large amount of it out um, and you sweat out a lot of fluid as well, sure. which will, will lose weight as well, which is what a lot of um, boxers will do before the fight. They get rid of a lot of fluid yeah, that's to, to true. drop the weight that's as true. well as fat because the heat will... will do, and um, yeah, that fat, the fat and, but you, a small amount, you, you pee it out as well. You actually can pee. pee Goodness it, me. But you do, yeah. I don't think people are aware of this. Mm. Um, so okay, so what would be mm. if somebody came to you and said, "John, I want to lose a bunch of weight." Mm. Uh, what would you prescribe for them to mm. what, go into a sauna? Well, uh, first of all, they're starting that they're overweight, right? And mm -hmm. um, the first thing we recommend people do when they're overweight is don't exercise, and uh, that's that can't be right. Yeah, that's that's how so. Well, when you're overweight, you're putting a lot of stress on your joints, so jumping around is going to make it worse. Sure. But also, when you're overweight, you've got a lot of um, um, problems with you know your cardiovascular system and your heart so you're going to put it under even more stress mm -hmm. so um, also your, your hormones will definitely probably be out as well how do the hormones have anything to do with it well the, the big one that's causing uh, a lot of the weight gain today um, so by e you can't exercise your hormones right and you can't and it, it, so the the body which won't burn the fat so you got to get the hormones right and you've got to drop the weight first before you start your exercise and this is what people do, and they're like, okay, I've got to lose weight. I'm going to hit the gym. And, so they're, and they're actually going to cause more problems. And this is what a lot of is that right? gym um, instructors probably don't understand. So you've got to get your hormones right and, 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 and um, drop the weight. So that you do with your food. Okay, so you can correct your hormone, what is it, an imbalance? And mm -hmm. you somehow yep. correct that with, yep. with, with the, right, the right diet? With obesity, there's... Uh, there's yeah, the leptin needs correcting, estrogen levels and ghrelin and um, insulin levels. They all need total you know, transformation before you, those things like the exercise will start working. Okay. Exercise is something that's good for cardiovascular health and a part of it, but it's not designed to get rid of fat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and that's, that's done traditionally in Chinese medicine through, through with diet. And um, which is the, you know, through a process they call in Chinese bigu. And bigu is the process of um, understanding not only what to eat, but um, how to eat and when to eat. Okay. Really? And yeah, so that's the process that's 
very popular these days, it's the new thing on the block, is intermittent fasting, yeah. which is nothing new. It's an ancient practice of eating in a window. Uh, so you eat just as many calories yeah. that you would normally, uh, but you'll lose lots more weight because the old calories in, calories out just doesn't work. Yeah. And this is what they're discovering. And so by actually intermittent fasting, your body is going into ketosis. Okay. Um, naturally, organically, rather than, say, a ketogenic diet, which has a lot of side effects on the digestive system and the hormonal system and inflammation and histamine and all sorts of things. Because I, I feel like I'm hearing a lot about uh, the keto diet, this mm. ketosis. Mm. Um, I'll be honest with you, I haven't done a lot of research into that, mm. but um, it seems to be a new buzzword. Uh, it feels like it hasn't um, been around long. Uh, is, is this well, a new fad? I mean, should people it, be... It, is, it started with Dr. Atkins, um, who was the first sort of main kid on the block with um and it was a weight loss diet let's get it right weight okay. not, to, not to cure any disease sure and he did um die of a heart attack um but um as far as i understand but um you know it, you will lose a lot of weight on a keto diet because you're you know cutting out all your carbs sure so your body will just run on ketones and your body will start burning fat and that's why a lot of people do it because they feel a lot better and being in a state of ketosis can you know have a, quite a high but there's other ways to do it. Um, and the, the, as I say, the, the Chinese, the way it was done through intermittent fasting. So you can eat, still eat loads of carbs, yep. and uh, which is very important for your serotonin levels and your brain chemistry. Uh, whereas with, with this type of um, nat organic ketosis, we call it, you're, you, can, um, you can get into ketosis naturally. So when you're, your body only runs on two fuel sources. Really? Yeah. So it runs on, on carbohydrates uh -huh. or on fat. Now, your body can run on either or. Okay. Uh, we look at, say, the Eskimos uh, up there. They just run on fat. They, there is no plants up there. You know, if you've ever sure. been up to the north I guess so. of Canada, there's no trees. There's no, they just live on, they li just live on seals or, you know, and uh, on meat. fish and things like that. 100% meat diets. Are so, they healthy enough? Well, no, they have a lot of health problems. But because they have no carbs, they're in a constant state. So they, 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 can, they can live like that. They're not a great long-living culture. Okay. But... Um, they've managed to survive because our body can adapt. We're, we're quite a funny species in that we can live on one or the other. And then we've got cultures, ancient cultures like the, um, the Aztecs and the Mayans and, and they predominantly just lived on carbohydrates, corn and potatoes. So you can live on one or the other, right. but ideally you want to have a balance of both. Uh, with organic ketosis, you, you, you can... Your body, when it's not eating, because you're eating all these calories, same as you would normally, but mm -hmm. in a window. So you yeah. say four hours, you're eating as much as you like. Obviously, you want to eat healthy food. Your body's fasting 20 hours a day because it's 24 hours a day. Most oh. people eat all their waking hours. So this is causing hormonal problems. Yeah, long term. It, well, it's, it's scientifically shown not to, to, uh, to lengthen longevity. So we're talking about, you know, the Chinese were just fascinated of how you could live longer not just keep the weight off. Sure. So when our body goes into fasting 20 hours a day, uh, all the hormones get re-regulated and the inflammation goes down. That's the big killer is the inflammation, right? Uh -huh. So we want to keep inflammation down, not just be thin. We want to keep the inflammation down. We want to make sure we've got adequate levels of uh, the serotonin, melatonin, human growth hormone and DHEA. And so that all happens naturally when your body rests because you know, the old saying goes, rest is the best medicine sure so if you're eating all the time then your body never gets any rest so it can't regulate so so how 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 often should you eat what what time period of the day should you be eating well we recommend usually when we work with clients that they first of all start with an eight-hour window okay. so uh, a lot of people will eat all their waking hours so that, that that's a big one for, for people just to start suddenly eating all their calories in eight hours a day so that gives them a 16 hour fast each day so say they have breakfast yep breakfast means break the fast okay yeah i knew that and <laughs> i so knew that you break your fast at say noon uh, you have breakfast at noon and then you have uh, after uh, lunch in the afternoon yeah and then dinner at dinner time so say so you're eating between say 12 and 8 or you could do it the old-fashioned way which is the uh you know the old that old story of uh, breakfast like a king uh, lunch like a prince and dinner 
like a poor man. So in other words, no dinner. Okay. So you, you'd have eat between in the morning, but you'd finish at lunchtime. Do do people struggle with uh, you know getting into this new mm. routine, this new rhythm of not eating? Because I mean, I do like breakfast, so mm. that would mean that if I'm having breakfast at say eight o'clock in the morning, mm. I you know by sort of four in the afternoon, I can't eat anything mm. more. That that seems like that could be a bit of a struggle. Or would I still be hungry? By mid-afternoon? Well, funny enough, not because when you start practicing this, your body hormones, a, lo- a, lot, a lot of hunger mm. uh, is hormonal. Is that right? Yeah, and, and it's regulated uh, with, you know, these other hormones and leptin and in- insulin. And so um, we're actually hungry for energy, yeah? Yeah. Not necessarily food. Uh, so when your body's going to natural ketosis, your body will be burning energy. It's still eating when it's not eating, but it's just eating parts of your tummy and your bum. Wow. So you get surges of energy and, and like a satisfying um, feeling of an appetite. So you can, stru- you can structure it. So some people like to eat in the morning yeah, and, and eat that way. It, it doesn't really matter. But we start with eight hours and then eventually want to get to six hours a day. And mm-hmm. then if you're really wanting to transform the body and, and, and do a lot of healing, you, you want to be probably eating in a four-hour window each day, which gives you 20 hours of fasting a day that seems like a lot it does seem like a lot but you're eating all the same amount of food but you're just doing it in a, in a four hour window so you just feel like you're feasting just pigging out for four hours yeah pretty much and um this is scientifically shown now is the the healthiest way because when you're so you know fat people are into fasting right you know yeah. when you fast for several days at a time um, your body actually shuts its metabolism down slows it down you don't want to do that you want to speed it up mm-hmm. so because, you know, we're designed in nature. If we're in the bush and there was no food around for days, we're designed to be able to survive. So our body says, okay, no food. It's been day three now. I'll shut the metabolism down. I'll slow it right down to preserve energy. Yeah. And that's what we want to do when we want to lose weight. So we want to speed it up. So what they've found by eating each day, but eating the window, it speeds the metabolism up, but yet it does get rid of the inflammation. So this is what they call intermittent fasting. Yeah. So it actually is more medically beneficial than you know those extended long fasts which can have their purpose as well okay so which particular foods uh do you typically prescribe to people um Mm. to say feel better you know look better have more energy live longer i mean is there any particular food that it's you know i i go down for an acai bowl Mm. and i feel like i'm doing myself the world of good um because i think i've been led to believe that's a superfood what what sort of foods? Superfoods. Talk to me about that. Why are they superfoods? Mm. It's not like you got an eggplant wearing a cape or something. What yeah. makes them different to normal food? Yeah, so superfoods are, is a, I guess, an American term they've started with that's, you know, nutritionally dense foods. Um, all foods are superfoods in a way. You know, you could look at oats and it's one of the highest sources of uh, lysine along with millet. Uh, and lysine is an amazing uh, amino acid for preventing herpes and, and, and all sorts of things. And, um, you know, the, the, these foods are nutrient dense. And a lot of the ones we classify as superfoods, they are across the board really okay. high in things like acai berries, which have a, one of the highest, they're a very high ORAC value, O-R-A-C. Right. And the ORAC values are, you know, the, the amount of antioxidant punch that they have. Okay. And uh, preventing you know, aging and SI are quite high, but there's a lot of things in your kitchen that are massively higher than uh, SIE berries. Like what? Um, oregano, massively much more than um, that's, you know, the, probably one of the secrets to the Mediterranean is the oregano. Uh, that's got a lot higher than SIE and um, uh, of, of turmeric and also um, your sumac. Sumac's one of the, it's actually probably the highest. In, in the world is sumac really? sumac berries yeah. I've got to be honest with you John I don't have a lot of sumac in my cupboard oh mate you've got to get it it's the ancient <laughs> superfood of the the, the the Sumerians and the Egyptians where would you that. where would you get sumac I wouldn't even know where to buy that oh now they have it in every supermarket but uh, you know originally it was more in the say the Lebanese deli or something like okay. that and you know it, it's, it's added to salads and on you know um, things like eggs and things like that it's got a lemon zest flavour it's, it's, it's amazing it's great on avocados no kidding. But it's, it's an incredible superfood. And so just adding those to your foods 
But yeah, so it's uh, tasty as well. What about kale? Mm. Um, I feel like kale kind of made a big uh, appearance maybe mm. 10 years ago. Everyone wanted to get into the kale. So I started yeah. putting kale into my uh, smoothie. Yeah, kale. It didn't add to the taste, but I felt yeah. like I was doing the right thing. Um, and, and yeah. you know, and quinoa. Mm, mm. What, what about those? Yeah, kale. K- kale's one of those things that's, it's, you know, it's quite nutrient dense. There's a lot of chlorophyll and stuff in it, like a lot of green foods. Chlorophyll is... The um, green pigment that makes things are green. Okay. Um, that's why we taint a lot of the detergents green because it symbolizes cleansing. Mm-hmm. And uh, chlorophyll is cleanse the blood, cleanse the blood. And so, yeah, your greens are very good. Kale, though, they've shown um, uh, that it doesn't really digest very well raw. So it should, oh. it should be cooked. And same with cabbage, which is why traditionally that was fermented. You know, Asian diets, and you've got kimchi, and the traditional Europeans, the sauerkraut. Okay. Because they, they do produce, there's anti nutrients in them, and also they can cause a lot of gas. So, certain vegetables um, that you want to actually lightly cook mm-hmm. or ferment, mm-hmm. um, you don't want to be having raw kale. It's not, not good. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I better stop doing that. Um, yeah. I felt like I was doing the right thing <laughs> by throwing a few kale leaves in you my just smoothie. Lightly um, steam I, it. I should stop doing that immediately. Well, probably be a good idea because it'll it'll um you di- you actually get more nutrients out of it by lightly steaming it. You know, it's Just like it's, it's like certain things that we um we we, we cook we we'll get actually more. Like people think you know you know, raw just eating everything raw. Yeah, and um, I thought that was a good thing. Well, it is a lot of trendy. If you're people eating do that. things that are designed to be raw, right? So you know. Humans are the only animal on the planet that cook their food before they they cook their food, right? I guess every so, yeah. other animal on the planet is one hundred percent rawitarian. That's true. And so you know, we invented cooking, um, but which allowed us to eat other things yeah. that weren't really edible. You see? Yeah. So um, uh, that's that's kind of how it eventually. I mean, prior to to cooking and the invention of the the the, the um, the, the pot which went on the fire, yeah. the Asians, they, they didn't eat rice because rice is a grass seed and you can't eat raw rice. I, you ca- I guess you can. So yeah. once they worked out, you know, once they invented the steel pot and they put it on the fire, they could eat loads of other things which are very edible and fine. And you know, they, 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 the Asian culture survives on rice and they do very well. Hey, talk to me about protein. Um, mm. You know, oh boy, I feel like there's a, a long running debate about protein in meat. I'm a vegetarian myself, um, and I seem to be doing just fine uh, without meat. Um, mm. What are the protein rich mm. vegetables? Well, people ask me this a lot. Yeah, you don't really have to worry about a lack of protein in the West. I mean, we don't really have protein deficiencies. Uh, okay. We don't see um, these diseases today because, you know, proteins in. Yeah, you know, brown rice has twelve percent protein. I mean, we do most of our. That gro- seems like a lot. Yeah, but it's, it's you know nothing compared to say um, a lot of other foods. But you know, we do most of our growing, the highest amount of growth and muscle. You know, when we're babies, and um, that's on mother's milk, which is four percent protein. So, you know, we don't need massive. I mean, you look at fruitarians; they exist, yeah, and they do fine. True. And some of the ones I met are you know really ripped. Really? And yeah. And they just eat fruit, which is not that high in protein. Okay. So we, it's not, we, our body doesn't run on protein. You know, it needs protein, but it can get, it needs probably amounts of certain types of fats and carbohydrates. Right. Um, what would be a vegetable that would be a good one to get that fat and carbohydrate then? Would you say? Um, to get both, you mean? Yeah. Well, that, that's interesting because. Um, you know, in nature, um, all f- foods are either high in fat and low in carbohydrate, or they're high in carbohydrate and low in fat. Okay, they're not high in both. No, because Mother Nature knows they don't exist. They don't work together. And this is this explains the, di- the, di- the dichotomy between you know everyone's on in the, in the eighties. Everyone was on the low fat diet. Remember the Pritikin diet? Yes. Because yeah. if you go on a high carbohydrate diet, healthy carbs, are, you know, fresh fruits, and vegetables, grains, and yep. and avoid all the fats, your body will feel great and lose loads of weight. Yeah, okay. And it was popular. And, and now it's the high fat, low carb. Carbs are the enemy, right? Because <laughs> I'm hearing this. Because yeah. everyone is avoiding the carbs and the high fat and you'll lose weight that way too. It's Because they don't work together. Okay. This is what people don't understand. A lot of the people don't understand that you can actually do both but not at the same time. And this is what the Chinese worked out. So when your body only runs on two fuel sources. Mm-hmm. 
fat or carbohydrate. Yeah, you, you mentioned that. Yeah. yeah. So it not you know. So when you eat loads of fat with the carbohydrate, your body will use the easiest sources of carbohydrate and store the fat. Yeah. So what you don't want to do is eat your fat and your carbohydrate, just like Mother Nature, in the same meal. Interesting. And so when you are eating, if you are eating a high-fat meal, you avoid the carbohydrates. And if you're eating a high-carbohydrate meal, you can eat as much carbs as you like and still lose loads of weight as long as you're not mixing it with your fat. Because they don't work together. If you're yeah, like, sure, sure. You know, have a but do you think, though, that people, I mean, in their day-to-day lives, you mm. know, they're, they're not putting a lot of thought into this? And I would think that mm. some meals have both. I mean... Well, everything is based on combining, today, fat and carbohydrate. Yeah. Know, because when you combine the two, which Mother Nature doesn't, it causes chemical changes in the brain, which make us want to eat more. And feel ma- feel more like satisfied and oh really yeah and, like f- it gets these like chemicals going in the body which goes oh yeah you know and then we want to eat more and that's why you know every fast food outlet everything they serve is high in fat and sugar at the same time you look at a burger which is you know white bread sugar carbohydrate with uh-huh. the fatty beef patty yeah and, and or a thick shake we've got the sh- it's full of fat and sugar yeah uh, a donut fat and sugar. And, and, you know, we, we, we love the eggs on the toast, which is fat and sugar. So you eat the eggs without the toast. Okay. So I, I didn't know any of this. I feel like, I feel like not a lot of people know this stuff. Well, is, or is it just this me? is what the Chinese sort of were very into in that they understood it's not just about what you eat but how, you know, and when you eat, yeah. but how, how you combine foods. Okay. And this is um, a very important uh, thing, the way our body's designed. Because in Mother Nature... We wouldn't sit down and if we were, you know, like other animals, they didn't eat loads of foods all, sorry, all <laughs> at one time, right? Yeah. So they 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 just eat that food and then they eat that you know, is true. And so we sit down to all these foods and also get, that's what gets the chemicals going. We, we, you and I are designed to go and eat some nuts from a nut tree and just feast on those for a half an hour, or go and eat some uh, root vegetables. Yeah. Or go and eat some berries and sit under a berry tree and do that. We're not designed to. Eat all these different things at once. I did not know this. See, I, I, I think you're probably right about that. I, I'll sit and eat a whole packet of cashews till I can barely fit another one in. Mm. And I feel like I'm quite satisfied with that. Well, you would I thought that was unusual. Yeah. No, well, it, it's good to eat one <laughs> thing at a time. But the say with nuts, everyone's going nuts about nuts today. Right? Are they? Oh, I and, love nuts. Yeah. And Always have. In nature, we would never have done that because nuts have got these huge shells and it uh-huh. takes ages to get through them. And you got and you wouldn't, you know, take you like a good half an hour to get a good handful of nuts. Sure. And you'd be like, oh, working hard for that and satisfied. Yeah. You wouldn't sit down to a bag full of nuts. So because everything's done for us, yes. we don't eat naturally oh, anymore. Oh, boy. So you, you, we're overeating, you know, nuts in a big way. Yeah, okay. And that's causing a problem. Sure, you know, people are trying to activate them now, which is making them much more digestible. How do you mean by that? Uh, well, you know, soaking them, soaking them first in salt water, and then you know, sun, and then sun drying them or dehydrating them, which will help to make them more digestible. More digestible. I just like them roasted yeah. with a bit of salt. Yeah. Maybe my my pistachios. You know, yeah. I don't mind peeling a couple yeah. of shells off a pistachio once in a while. I'll mm. I'll gorge myself on them. It, would that be a bad thing? Well, yeah, it, it's it's gonna it's a. Uh, it's going to affect your digestion. You, I mean, I can tell from your body type and also I've given you treatment <laughs> before, so I know all about you, but... Be gentle. You, you know, your digestive system is quite strong, so you can, you know, it's not going to hit you so hard okay. until you get older. Um, so some people, their digestive systems are already quite weak. So that's oh. going to, yeah. And we want to strengthen the digestion. The whole thing with Chinese medicine is not just about losing weight. Mm-hmm. It's about getting rid of inflammation, re- regulating the hormones... Uh, lengthening, you know, keeping the telomeres long and promoting longevity while at the same time getting the digestive system at its optimal level. Whereas uh, in the West, it's more about just looking good sort of externally, so so to speak, in a lot of ways. We've got to look at um, the internal alchemy of the body just as much as the external. Mate, I feel like we could go, you know... Th- <laughs> You know, I've just had an idea. I feel like there's so much information here. And, you know, before we go, I do want to ask you about um, acupuncture as well because I know that you've done some acupuncture on me um, mm. in the past and that's been surprisingly mm. helpful. Mm. Um, you know, as you know, I had that sort of elbow issue from tennis and golf and squash and surfing uh, yep. and, and you did acupuncture. Um, 
But I tell you what I was going to say. Um, I, I think we need to do a bit of a show where we just continue this theme. Uh, there's so, I feel like we've only just scratched the surface, and I think people would really cool. benefit from from. If hearing. people would like that, we can. Yeah, well, can well I think ask, they will. Ask me anything, and I'll do yeah. my best. Do my best, you know. We're yeah. All I, I honestly, John, I actually didn't know you knew quite as much about this stuff. I guess this is your field, um, and it's it's so wide. Um, I knew you did acupuncture. I knew you did massage. I knew you did. Well, it's mm. Chinese medicine, I suppose. I should have really... Um, I never gave you uh, quite the credit that um, you're, you're across all of this stuff. We, we've got to do you more of it. to read it. that book that I gave you. Well, you did, <laughs> you did give me a book. I was, to be fair, I flicked through it and, okay. and, and I was uh, impressed, but it was some heavy reading. Uh, it, wasn't, um, it wasn't light reading. It was a page turner, but... Um, yeah. And, uh, and thank you for that. Don't tell me this. Like, but I don't know. It, 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 there's a lot to know. Mm. Um, certainly a lot I don't know clearly. And I reckon people out there would mm. really benefit from hearing more about this mm. stuff. Um, I think you should come in once a week and chat to us about... Uh, and, and we'll get you know a, a nice um, checklist of things that people should know and understand about their bodies and feeling better. And, um, mm. and it's, it's quite involved. You know, Believe me, for the first time of hearing all this stuff, mm. it, for me it seems... A little overwhelming. It, it, um, it totally is, and it is when I first started understanding it all. Because today we're all interested in health. You know, we yeah. want to fix our own bodies. It's like we all want to fix our own cars. And you know, you go down to the auto sh- auto auto barn, and you're you're trying to work everything out, and yeah. you don't have a mechanic there with you to say, look, this is, it just takes so long, and you make so many mistakes. Yeah. And today we, you know, get online, and we want to educate, empower ourselves because we, you know disenchanted with western medicine and, mm-hmm. and just treating the diseases rather than treating health and so we're like okay what do i do and how many supplements do i need and just like it's just a, bar- a barrage of so much confusion yeah so that's why we tried to take that confusion out and um by creating a very, you know, explaining all the facets of natural medicine which is what we did in the eight immortal healers the book that uh, yep, I, yep, I, I recall I yep and so you know um you, there's a basic, you know, in, in Western medicine, there's all a basic um, training, right? So every doctor has the same basic training. Sure. And uh, from there, they can go and specialize. So they all know what they're talking about when they talk to each other. Yes. In natural medicine today, it's very fragmented. So, you know, the osteopath has no idea what the naturopath maybe is doing. The naturopath has no idea what the Chinese medicine is doing. They speak a completely different language. And the massage therapist has no idea about that. And so there's no formal training in natural medicine. So they don't all have the f- same formal training, which, okay. is, which is what they did in China. Is there a way to unify this? Well, yes, that's what the book's talking about. Okay. And so if we all had the same basic training and branched off and specialized, and I, you know, in countries like um, uh, Germany, they're starting to look at this. And, and, but th- and that, I mean, that's why you go, when you, if you into natural medicine, right, and you're not going to go to the Western doctor, you go from practitioner to practitioner, they're all saying something different. Okay, yeah. And they're all like, well, this guy told me I was doing did that. And, and it's very confusing because th- th- a lot of them aren't educated in certain areas. We need a one-stop shop. Yes, and then you, need, you obviously have specialists as well. Mm-hmm. And so natural medicine needs to come together if it's going to survive and, and, and not you know, um, separate itself. And that's why Western medicine is so powerful because it's unified and it, it's, it's got a, quite a big force behind it yeah. well financially as well. But yeah, there's, so there's, an, um, there's a lot more to talk about and we can help simplify things for people because people are spending so much hard-earned money and a lot of it wasting it yeah. on these health fads um, or supplements they don't need. With the not the best results either. Yeah, so... Um, there is a way to achieve that very cheaply, very, very affordably. You know, mm-hmm. good health should be very, very affordable without having to spend loads of money, you know, weight yeah. loss without having to do loads of exercise or things like that. Hey, John, I know your family um, were involved, you know, in this sort of realm uh, with you growing up and whatnot. Mm. Is that where you learnt, I suppose, initially, you know, mm. you, you got this interest in mm. these subjects, mm. but... Did you spend time in India also? Yes. Yeah, so um, I, like a lot of people, when I was doing my yoga training, I was doing yoga in Australia. I wanted to go and do a traditional Indian training you know, uh-huh. in India. So um, I went to India and to do my basic um, formal training. You go over there and do your one month at the ashram. Mm-hmm. And uh, I stayed for 10 years permanently. 10 years. Mm-hmm. Boy, oh boy! And uh, so I've I, heard. I've heard India is incredible. Mm. By the way, I've heard everyone that goes to India just 
is in raptures about the place. It's, mm. um, w- what is it about India that, that kept you there oh, for 10 years? That's a really good question. Well, f- first of all, I met um, a lovely Indian lady. On oh, the here we training. go. This here we go. Also happened to be a, a Bollywood dancer. And so, um, you know, that kept me there for quite some time. Uh, she's a lovely lady and I still talk with her. And she's a very successful, she's an Indian, of course, an amazing yoga teacher there in, okay. in, in, in Mumbai and uh, international teacher. And s- yeah, so from there I, I, I studied Ayurveda and went into going go deep, but also ran my own business over there, working um, with Chinese medicine with the Bollywood Bollywood stars over there. And you're working here now. Um, what it's Eden? Eden is it? Yeah, the Eden Retreat, uh, yep. and that's um, in the beautiful um, rainforest here. In the you got to take me there, man. You got to take me there because I've driven yeah. past. It's beautiful from the outside. I've never stepped foot in the yeah, joint, we'll but invite, um, we'll have to invite you there. It's yeah, an amazing place. Yeah, what, what we do I'd like there. to go check it out. Let's, um, yeah, take me for a walk through, see what you guys do. I'd be very interested. Mm. Um, well, man, look, we could go on and on, um, but we're sort of going to wrap it here. Uh, but look, you know what? We're definitely going to get you back, mate. And uh, I feel like, okay, like mate. I said, we've only just scratched the surface. Um, and uh, there's so much to know here. And I want to know more. And I don't doubt that other people do too. So uh, we're definitely going to dig deeper on this. And okay. I think we should get something like, a, I don't know, maybe, what, what do you think? Maybe a little online program. Would that be possible? You could do some regular gigs if you want to. I mean, people can request stuff as well if you want That's to. a good um, idea. We've got some interesting topics we chat about today. We might want to go into more detail. That's a great idea. In fact, what I'll do is I'll throw it out there on Instagram because, mm-hmm. um, you know, see what the following believe uh, we should sort of go deeper into and, um, yeah, see what people, what resonates with them. But um, mm. I don't doubt that they'll be very interested in it because I certainly am. Um well, John, it's been a real pleasure to have you, mate. Thank Gosh, you. thank you for coming yeah. today. And yeah. Uh, yeah. well, like I said, we're going to get you back, and yeah. um, we'll we'll do more of this. And yeah. and this has been a lot of fun. Um, and I've learned a lot, and I feel like there's so much more to know. I feel like uh, yeah. just at the foothills of, of all this knowledge that you yeah. have. Yeah, we're, we're all learning. I'm I'm always learning um, from my teachers, and it's, you know, it's an ongoing thing. Yeah, and um, that's what it's about. It's about learning, you know, empowering everyone so that they get the information and they can make those decisions. Fantastic. And um, yeah. Well, John, thanks for coming. And uh, hey, guys, thanks for hanging around and listening to what we've been chatting about. It's interesting yeah. stuff and yeah. we're going to have him back for sure. Um, Namas- yeah. Namaste. 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 Yeah. You know what namaste means, don't you? Uh, it's, uh, have, have a good one. <laughs> <laughs> the yoga class is over. No, <laughs> no just joking. <laughs> namaste. Namaste means I bow stay to you. I bow to you. Yeah, most people think it means. Well, there you go. I bow to you. Yeah, and I bow to you too. Namaste. Yeah, and um, hey... We'll be back soon. Nice to see you.